Dans les parcelles cultivées, il y a effectivement une partie de la biodiversité part of the biodiversity qui va contre la production et qui détruit la production. Is detrimental for production. De la production agricole, We have la attackers et qui est the destructive biodiversity des made of parasites, virales, diseases, viral diseases, fungal diseases, euh, bacterial diseases, oiseaux, predators, euh, birds, euh, rats, toute une série de autres Worms, caterpillars, and all kinds of agricultural plagues, and competitors such as other plants, which decrease the yield of cultivated crops. Now, the wide diversity of attackers, which are illustrated here, we have the uh, fruitworm on maize, nematodes uh, on bananas, uh, diseases on sugarcane, uh, Drosophila being attacked by uh, ants on mang fruit, mango fruit, and also white worms attacking the roots of maize, uh, a disease on cocoa, plants, all these... Uh, Aggressors, attackers are a problem for agriculture and farmers, and they account for a huge potential loss or even observed loss. This uh, table shows you the various types of attackers, uh, fungi, bacteria, viruses, uh, animals, uh, other plants, uh, and the losses, potential losses are huge. The total decrease of uh, production due to these uh, four categories of attackers may reach 67%. Two-thirds of the uh, crop may be lost versus a situation, uh, a similar situation without the attackers. Now, agriculture for a long time has focused on how to best control or even eliminate the attackers. At the bottom, on the bottom line, we see the efficacy of a possible fight against attackers in percentage. We never will be able to eradicate the attackers, limiting the yield of crops, but we have ways to reduce the attacks. In modern agriculture, however, the best way consists in using, or the most efficient way consists in using biocides, pesticides, targeting this or that attacker. Industrial agriculture and agriculture in the green revolution countries, intensive, intensive single species with a high use of fertilizers, invest a lot in pesticides and they use huge quantities of fungicides, uh, pesticides. The chemical turnover represents $40 billion in this field, so it's a huge cost for agriculture to uh, try and eliminate or mitigate the action of parasites. There is a paradigm on which uh, agricultural production is based. It's all about eradication. An attacker is a limiting factor, it decreases the yield, we use a biocide to try and eliminate the attacker. But by doing this, we forget about the wealth of ecosystemic services uh, present both in the cultivated plot and all around the cultivated plot. I think it is high time we thought about other ways to fight against parasites and attackers because abundant use of pesticides obviously has a negative, a negative impact on both the uh, producers' and farmers' health, on the consumers' health. We have reason to worry that the use of pesticides by uh, farmers, especially in uh, developing countries where safety rules are not really complied with, we have a huge public health problem. And obviously, uh, pesticides leave residues on the produce, whereby the consumers are also in danger and the whole ecosystem is in danger. Toxicology of the pesticides in the environment is really a source of worry. The uh, man who invented DDT and got the Nobel Prize about 80 years ago 
pour se rendre And ever since we have come a long way to understand that it's now absolutely necessary to limit the use of pesticides. The Ecofito plan in France, which aims at dividing by two the use of pesticides within a few years' time, is being implemented. It's in progress, except that it's very difficult to control the pests and attackers differently. Research produces all of the uh, agricultural industry of looking for new ways to control pests and attackers and diseases. There is a very good example of a new way to achieve this result, the use of vegetal biodiversity present on the plot and around the plot. On the left-hand side, you see agrochemistry, everything used by industrial agriculture to get rid of uh, attackers, mainly pesticides. The efficacy is specific. It limits uh, the uh, efficacy of bio-attackers for one campaign, maybe two campaigns or three until the bio-attacker finds a way to resist the pesticide and develops resistance. But it also has an impact on production and yield is high, except that an excessive use of pesticides may lead to a very unfavorable situation. Banana plantations in Central America require 50, 60, 70 treatments a year. Almost once a week, an airplane has to spread pesticides on the plantation. You can imagine the problem this entails. On the right-hand side, we have ways to fight attackers by the use of uh, biodiversity a specific vegetal diversification. There are very specific examples showing that one may achieve a favorable impact on human health and environmental health with different methods than uh, spreading poisons uh, in the environment. This can be achieved through uh, beneficial organisms uh, which fight the attackers or parasitoids or parasites or pests which attack the original pest. And this also will have a beneficial effect on uh, soil fertility and biological activity in the soil. And finally, there are some spectacular effects on economy and yield with this new way to eliminate attackers. I'll, I'll give you one example on how to use uh, vegetal diversity in order to get rid of a uh, pest that attacks uh, maize in uh, Africa. This uh, system was uh, developed by ICP in Africa. It's it's called the push-pull system, push as in pushing, pull as in pulling, attracting. There is a type of moth and uh, worm that attacks maize and may uh, reduce by 60, even 80 percent the crop yield. Now, this moth, fruit worm, lays its eggs uh, on the uh, cob, the uh, larvae go into the uh, cob and destroys the maize. The system is a push-pull system whereby all around the plot, a plant will be planted simply to provide a service. It attracts the female moss looking for a place to lay their eggs, and this plant is toxic for the female moth. The moth deposits its uh, eggs on this uh, type of grass, and uh, the eggs will not develop. They'll be intoxicated. Now, this is the pool system, attracting the moths. And in order to reinforce the system between the uh, stalks of maize, this modium is planted, and this modium is a plant that pushes away the female moss, and therefore the uh, moth population looking for a place to lay their eggs are pushed away by this plant. They don't like it. This is a very simple, relatively uh, cheap system to push away the parasite out of the uh, plot, attracting it outside of the plot to eliminate it with a toxic plant. There are other advantages because the desmodium planted between the uh, maize stalks is a leguminous plant which is going to provide nitrogen and fertilize the soil, free of charge. And the desmodium, some species of desmodium, have an allelopathic effect on uh, striga seeds. Striga is a plant which is a parasite for maize, and this modium will kill the striga seed when they germinate. So it's a 
a way to engineer biodiversity in order to control a parasite moth or fruit worm. And this system is now being used by tens of thousands of producers and farmers in Africa. This uh, family of systems, this push-pull system, has been adapted uh, in other systems. A system that allows to push away the parasites and attract them to a different place, to in a trap where they will be naturally eliminated, was in, developed by CIRAD for uh, vegetable growing companies or farms. And this way to fight parasites uh, is accessible for small producers, relatively cheap, and it doesn't have a negative impact on the environment. We are finally realizing that um, we don't need to think in terms of a prescriptive way to eliminate parasites with a pesticide, same way that a pharmacist uh, or a doctor would uh, make a diagnosis and give you a, uh, a prescription to go and buy the drug. No, we have to rethink the whole system. And there are other such-like examples, the biological fight against the pest, extraction of natural substances for some products in order to spread them on the uh, cultivated plants, and even uh, plants that sanitize the environment. I remember I told you about the banana. Well, in order to fight against uh, nematode and weevil infestation, there is a plant that uh, will limit nematodes and limit uh, weevil populations, and that uh, will go from 15, 20 uh, treatments on the, uh, in the French West Indies uh, on banana plantations and divide the number of uh, treatments by three. This is better for the consumers, better for the producers, and obviously it's also a better way and a more economic way to fight attackers.